Hi, I am Kajar on two wheels and I am at Qashqai's Way, I'll show you the logo, to test drive the Cross Tourer, the VFR 1200X. Awesome! <laughs> So I'll do the walk around on a more cool scenic location and I just might insert it here or maybe not. Oh, this is heavy. <laughs> but just for the record, this is 275 kilograms, which is hmm, 500, 500 and a lot pounds. Ooh, chunky foot pegs, really big foot pegs. And that's Linya Way or Kashkaj Way here. And that's a goat. <laughs> so, very first impression it is heavy when stopped and it is very tall. Let me see if I can actually flat foot this. Can I? Is it possible? I am 1.74 meters tall and. Nope, no flat footing at all. Let's put a flat foot on the left side. And I have to shift me myself slightly to the left. It is silky smooth, considering I've been test driving KTMs all week. Single cylinders KTMs, this is quite a difference. <laughs> and it's also surprisingly easy. Although this clutch is very heavy. Wow, it goes really well. It goes really, really well. Let's see if I can jump the line. Of course I can jump the line. Okay, full throttle. Woohoo! Holy cow! <laughs> Sheesh! That is some speed! And this is only 130 uh, horsepowers. Well, all the aerodynamics really, really helps it get up to speed. That was so fast getting to up to 200. Whoa, and it felt so comfortable getting up to 200. And this little whoa was because I just felt the same effect as I did on the Super Tenere, which is when I lean it more than X, it suddenly tends to want to drop. Which is pretty odd. Oh, okay. I'm looking down because uh, the gear lever was having a weird feel. I'm not wearing my riding boots for this. I should, but I did not have time. I'm wearing my dress shoes and so the feel of the lever was very weird. And I was looking down making sure I was doing it right and I wasn't. It's so smooth. Okay, first impressions. That turning thing was odd. Huge engine. I can't believe this is only 130 horsepower. Because that was seriously impressive getting up to 200 that fast. Seriously. The dash is very complete. Do I have a fuel? Yes, I have there. Average 7.2, 7.1. Can I reset this? How do I reset this? I think I'm gonna have to stop to reset that. FCD average. Oh, this is the instant. This is the average. This should be to reset. Reset the average deck. Okay, I think it's reset now. Oh, ho, ho. whoa! <laughs> okay, let's try second gear. Say 30 to 70. 30 kph to 110 in second gear. This is nearly idle and floor it. Whoa! Whoa! 
Whoa, that's that's fast. Not only that, it's silky smooth all the way. There's a rush of acceleration, but it's not just a punch. It it's gradual. The, the first half a second or so is really gradual, so you can just if you jerk the throttle, it's not going to shoot. It shoots a bit, but for example, let's let me try and show you. Listen. Did you hear that? It's that first. Feels a bit like as if it had turbo lag when you're at low revs. It only has that power from three up. That's yet four. How it goes? But the throttle is really nice. There's a there's a slight smoothness in, in the beginning, which is exactly what the MT09 did not have. So it's really, really easy and really manageable. I'm just going to stop here. I'm, I just want to look at the tires. So these tires, Jesus, this is tall and heavy. Yeah, these are semi-tires or what? Yeah, these are semi-tires. That's probably because I have... That's probably the reason why I had that weird feel for, for it wanting to fall over when riding. But it's much less than the Super Tenere. Much, much less. It also doesn't feel quite as big as the Super Tenere for some reason. Even though the dash is further away. And this... This is a competitor to the Super Tenere. Even though... It, doesn't quite seem to be as rugged or designed to be for quite so extreme uh, off-road but this is supposedly its competitor from Honda what's what happened to this road why is it full of rubbish uh, but it feels lighter than the Tenere it feels nicer to corner also and the engine is I have to say less powerful but more smooth. I remember the Super Tenere lighting up the traction control at several speeds. Then again it had off-road tires so less grip available. So that's why also this is nicer to corner because it doesn't have off-road tires or at least they're mixed. That's probably the difference. And the looks on this is also more aerodynamic. Uh, windscreen is supposedly adjustable. I think it's on the higher setting now. Yes, it is. You can put it onto several settings. Dash is very complete. And now let's see what's what. I don't know if this is stock. I'd be surprised if it is though. Brakes feel nice. Mirrors are all screwed up. If I want to brake test, I'm going to need... Oh, the mirrors are excellent! Wow! I can see everything behind me! These are awesome! I want these on my bike! It's really hard to be impressed by mirrors, but... I'm trying to get the same angle. Look, I can see everything! <laughs> In comparison, the KTM ones were usually little postage stamps from which you could maybe see a bit of the road on a lucky day. Now the twisties are about to begin. Engine note, not so much. Really silent. Really needed more... But nothing, it's really quiet, too civilized. For the performance I saw, it should be more violent. Let's try stopping from 70 to not at this intersection. Clear and stop. Ugh. Strong, but lots of ABS. So I kind of ruined the stopping by that lot of ABS. Let's try again and stop. 
Hmm. They're heavy. They're strong, but I feel they could be stronger. Maybe I, I did something wrong. Yeah, it's two discs. Then again, it did stop fast. Or maybe I'm spoiled by the KTM's huge brakes. <laughs> but these are very good. They're, don't, don't get me wrong. It's just that I've been test driving the other ones and they feel a lot stronger. Huge, actually. They're Brembo's and huge Brembo's. This one. Still good, very strong indeed. Oh yeah, now this is braking. Yeah, these are properly sized brakes. <laughs> okay, so here and in a short trip here no issues whatsoever no uncomfortableness nothing so this is what the fudge are you doing are you trying to kill me so this is a huge ass bike 270 kilograms but it doesn't ride like one it rides as a much lighter bike i remember the gtr was a pain the G GTR 1400 and it wasn't as heavy but this one still feels relatively light relatively obviously and so nice to corn look I'm s I'm not comfortable with it yet and look how lean I was Wow corners nicely goes like a tiny rocket the Beast is stronger, the GTR is also stronger, the Z1000 is also stronger, obviously, but this lady is 130 horsepower, delivered in a very manageable and very impressive way though. Never quite goes berserk, but there's always a force pushing you forward, you saw it, you saw the dash climbing quickly up to 200. And there was absolutely no wind, zero, nothing. And this is supposed to be the stock screen. Now, all, all the way up to 200, if you hear it, if you go back and hear the sound, there was barely any wind noise because there was barely any wind. Which is actually more impressive than I thought at first. Ooh, bonk. This is the only off-road I'm going to do with this one. Because <laughs> I've never done actual off-road with it. And as you can see, I'm very comfy with it, because it's surprisingly stable and easy to manage at slow speeds, even parking speeds, etc. But still, for example, I'm trying to reverse and there's no way I can do that! <laughs> it's impossible, it's too heavy. But when stopped at lights, etc., I can manage it just fine. So there's some clever weight distribution going on here. So now let's go for the walk around. This is the VFR 1200X. <sighs> front to back, you've got spoke wheels front and back. Front tire is a 110 and the rear tire is a 150. So that's odd, that's actually thinner than my NC700X. I'd wager a bet it's because of the off-road characteristics they want. You've got inverted suspension, you've got... That, is that one, two or three pistons from Nissan? I have no idea, but you've got double disc brakes with ABS. Rear ABS is a bit intrusive, front one isn't. Uh, I do believe this has the linked brakes, at least when I braked, I f it felt like it had linked brakes. Might be wrong though, because there's only one hose coming out, oh, this is one from each, and from this side. If there's linked brakes, there's another hose going back. Yeah, that's linked brakes, that's what this other hose is doing. 
uh, you've got your LED indicators, you've got this windscreen which if you unbolt this you can put it on the lower setting here and maybe in, on even slightly lower, I think this is the highest one. Insects are free, hand guards which I would be jolly surprised if they were stock. A beautiful, beautiful paint scheme, matte white, with this fantastic Honda logo. It's got this little radiator protector and something that's very useful for off-roading, even though it could come all the way up, but at least this is the bare minimum to protect the radiator from thrown rocks. I really like this detail, knowing your oil level just by looking at her, and apparently it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, you have one huge ass exhaust, but then again, this is a four cylinder, even though it's only got two exits. It's too quiet. It's re it really is too quiet. And here's something I read about, but I really like. You know what this is? This is like the Z1000 SX. This is to fit your uh, panniers. So you can put the side cases here, and they just. It's done. There's no extras to buy. There's no weirdness there's no scaffolding there's nothing it's just they just fit in here they'll just grab here and probably they'll slide into this and they're done they're going to be really flush with the bike so it's not going to be like hanging off they're going to be one with the bike same with the rear uh i'm not really sure this is stock but i would be pretty damn pleased if it was it does look like a stock piece it doesn't look like it's added anywhere. You've got a little, little uh, hey. How do you open this? Oh, this removes the whole seat. Okay, not much of a storage space here. But the battery is there. Handy. How do I close this? Are you closed? I think so. Let's see if the seat doesn't fly off. Yeah, it's supposed to be closed. Let's hope. More. This has lots of things. You've got a single swing arm, which is also the transmission, which is a drive shaft transmission. So that's really weird. I I don't think I ever saw that. Yeah, it's a swing arm, and the swing arm is the drive shaft. Did the Super Tenere have this? I don't remember. Hmm. Weird. Okay, that's the rear suspension uh, regulator, hard and soft. Suspe front suspension, is it adjustable? I have no idea. Someone will have to comment and tell me if it is or not. Now, this lever with these rest shoes, which was a stupid decision for me, had an issue. I was putting my feet like, like so, putting it here, making it touch this, then trying to shift. So, this part of the foot was actually hitting on this little bend. I had to look and move it backwards to hit, so I'm not really sure why this isn't simply straight and then like usual. Why why is it why is there this little curve? I have to I'll guess it's because of this little plastic thingy here. But yeah, that's why I was always looking down. It's a really minor thing. Other than that, the whole bike looks fantastic. You've got a little thingy torque control. I did not try that. What does this do? I wonder what this button does. No explosions. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what this does. Mm. Nothing? Maybe it has to be working. Ah! Yeah, it's traction control on or off. Oh! So that's the traction control off button! Which is a brilliant idea, because if you're doing road, you want the traction control on. Then say you go on to off-road, you want the traction control on. But then you want some extra off-road, you're going to be climbing something where you are going to be needing to be spinning your wheels like a maniac. There's no crazy settings, you just reach down and press here for a little while, and your traction control's off, that's brilliant. That's actually quite clever. And yeah, that's it. This is the VFR 1200. I really like this one. It's nice. It, it's, it can be used as a regular bike. I have no idea on the consumption, but it's going to be high. Six or five. Then again, six or five isn't very high, but I know the consumption you 
blithering idiot. I have the computer to tell me what did I use as fuel. So, what did I use? 7.6. And I was giving it the beans every now and then. So this will do, I don't know, six and a half. Six, six and a half. It's not too bad. It, it's heavy. It's car-like, but it's not nothing too extraordinary. So it can be used as a, an everyday bike, and it is very comfortable. The fact that I forgot to mention it, I think it speaks volumes because it is comfy. It's not quite as a, a stretched leg position as in the Super Tenere, but it's close. So I took it completely out of its element into inner city or inner town twisties and just look at this just look how comfy it is going low speeds going tight cornering at low speeds low revs I'm at one and a half it's complained a bit but it still went less than 2000 rpm and it's easily going there's a car coming and even though I can only reach look at my feet my foot that's only one side of one side of the bike because I, I can't do that on both it's really tall and even being really tall it's really stable it's really nice to ride so it's proven this can be used every day provided you remember to put your foot down when you brake because it's really heavy even though it's really heavy it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel heavy when accelerating, doesn't feel heavy when turning, feels heavy when, when braking. Maybe I'm spoiled by the KTM oversized brakes, but I feel braking could be harder. This is exactly the opposite of these, what these bikes like to do. Look, old man. Why are you in the middle of the road? And yet, it's not super agile, okay? It's a 275... Take it easy, man. It's a 275 kilogram bike. It's never going to be super agile. But it is agile enough. Doesn't feel clumsy. Not like the GTR 1400, which felt downright clumsy when you stopped it at a light and then tried to turn left or right. This doesn't feel like that. And like all motorcycles, as soon as you start moving, the weight kind of disappears. But even so, this, even with when moving, it's, it's still... Look, I can still zigzag easily. And the easiness of riding is actually increased by the good throttle response and the good engine response because the engine responds but it's never exaggerated even though I haven't I haven't noticed I didn't notice this before but it does have an extra little push at 5000 rpm when you reach 5000 something happens and it gives you a second jolt it seems like a, an auxiliary engine turns on you're, you're accelerating it's going Whoa, and then reaches five and you s you feel like a, 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 an extra surge of power but it's nothing too extreme it's not going to lift the wheel so yeah I like it it's a very balanced machine just like I like it it's very good at, at, at just about everything well for this price it better be <laughs> so yeah that's my thoughts on this little baby baby <laughs> uh, I'm just going to ride up there and show you the 5k uh, jolt felt I felt that did you see my head tilting slightly backwards I'm going to relax a bit to exaggerate that backwards movement so you can see it I don't want to do this in first gear Accidental wheelies are bad, okay? Okay, let's go. I'm going to go full throttle from 2000 RPM ready full throttle <laughs> Awesome engine 
This is just like the 690 and the MT-07. Powerful, very exciting, but I can still manage it, so I love it. It's not terrifying, it's not too much for me. And that's why I, I really love this range of power from, say, 130, but this, these are some very tame 130 horsepower, probably because of the, the weight, to the 75 horsepower, which is what I can manage easily over that and I'm going to be more scared than having fun and that's it gauge her out so Super Yamaha Super Tenere or the VFR 1200X Cross Tourer. Depends. Because they have slightly different purposes. Even though they're on the same thing, the big adventure bike, the Super Tenere is a big adventure bike with which is ma meant for off-roads and roads, while the Cross Tourer is meant for roads and off-road. It's just that slight difference. You can use either in any of the roles and they will do nicely but they have slightly different emphasis and that's why one looks very sleek it's very aerodynamic and it looks really smooth and the other one looks rugged looks rough ready to tumble ready to drop you know if you if you make it just fall it's not going to break itself apart and and to prove that you know which one of those i'm speaking of when i say this right so yeah, if I had to choose, it would depend on what I would do. Me, personally, since I don't know how to do off-road, I'd go for the Cross Tourer. You guys with super motos would probably go for the Super Tenere. Both are great bikes. Both can be used daily, the Cross Tourer more, slightly more than the Super Tenere, but the differences are really tiny. Really tiny. It's not night and day. It's, it's not like this one and the Super Tenere in off-road capabilities, no. It, they're very similar, it's just details. And to prove it, the test, test drive machine I tested on the Super Tenere had full off-road tires and this one had semi-off-road tires. And I think that speaks volumes of the target, uh, the target purpose and the target demographic and the target customer they want from each of those bikes. And that's it. Good route.